Hi everyone, welcome to a new video. So I'm at the same place that I was at last time because I'm using this room as my little interior design office just because all the samples take up so much space. So I'm still working on mine and Ben's bedroom in the annex, so the master bedroom and the adjoining ensuite bathroom. And this room will be our bedroom at first, but down the road it will become my office. So I wanted to do it out in a way that I really liked and so that we wouldn't have to redo it later. Here are the plans here. So I did show you show you this room in my last video. Having my bed along this wall, wardrobes going in here. I'm gonna have a set of drawers here. And then this is my little dressing table and then the bathroom is through here. So this is the wallpaper that I've chosen for the bedroom. I love this. I'll try to put an inspiration picture so you guys can see my vision. For this whole project, mostly phase two, I'm going for a Victorian farmhouse sort of theme because I think it's really in keeping with the property. I think it's early 1900s. And then this is the wallpaper for the bathroom and I think this design is just really minimal and cute and nice for wallpaper so it won't be too busy when both Ben and I are staying in that room and, and it will go nicely with the furniture that I've had my eye on for my office. And then here are the drawings for the wardrobe. So, so I was back and forth speaking to the wardrobe designer today. So this was originally his design for the bedroom. So you can see that it's got the sloped ceilings and we have this little inlet from where the door is. Luckily, we are able to fit some wardrobes down in the corner here. This was his original design, but I've made some amendments. And so this is the second drawing that he's come up with. It's closer now, but I'm still not entirely happy with it. I'd love to have open storage up here and maybe put like baskets and things up there because I don't know if I like it going all the way up to the ceiling. It will be so much nicer when I can show you in person, but right now this is what I'm working with. We're also putting in wardrobes in Ben's office too, so we're just going to do something standard and I really want the drawers along the bottom, so I've made that amendment and he's going to see what he can do for that. Over here are my reject samples for the wallpaper in the bedroom. This was originally what I really wanted. This is a Ralph Lauren wallpaper. And I think it would look really nice, but it is just quite stark and the style of it doesn't match the sort of farmhouse vibes. Whereas this one does, because you can see it's stamped, it looks a lot more rustic. So that was a no. And then these ones I think would be really nice, but again, not very farmhouse, more French. So no French toile de juillet. And this one is beautiful as well. This would look really nice, but I think it's too blue. I wanted to keep it more neutral in that room. But honestly, this would be such a pretty wallpaper for a bathroom, I think. So I'm gonna hold on to that one. This is beautiful, but I'm actually going to be using the same wallpaper, but in a different colorway in our master bedroom in the phase two. So if you guys didn't watch my last video, basically we're living in a little apartment at the beginning that we're doing up really quickly. And so we'll live there while we build the main part of the house, which we'll move into later. So I'm simultaneously working on the two projects. But as you can tell, we're going for a traditional English farmhouse sort of vibe. I know there's gonna be some people who are like completely anti-wallpaper. And I understand I used to be anti-wallpaper, but I think it really suits the property and the overall look and feel that we're going for. I won't be putting wallpaper in every single room. It's just gonna be mostly, I'd say bedrooms and bathrooms and we'll have to wait and see for everything else. I think it really helps to give that cottagey farmhouse feel. So I'm very excited for that. So I thought I'd put you guys on the tripod just quickly to talk about my diet and nutrition because I did talk about this on Instagram and a lot of you guys were really interested how I discovered that my mental health symptoms most likely linked to my gut health. The main clue being that I have struggled with food intolerances for the last few years when growing up I had none. I've struggled with anxiety and depression since I was probably 15 years old was the first time, but I was generally pretty good until I was 20. So in university, that's when kind of the overwhelm and the pressure got a lot. And I think that triggered it. And then I got into fitness and I got really, really healthy. I was eating whole foods and exercising in a way that was appropriate for my body. So I wasn't overdoing it in the gym and I was enjoying it. And during that time, I was the most healthy that I've ever been. I had the most energy. 
I felt great. I didn't struggle with any food intolerances. My anxiety and depression were gone. I know that I can be in a state where I am healthy all around mentally and physically. So it's about getting back to that. I was experiencing all of these benefits for the first two years that I started eating healthy and training with weights and exercising a lot more frequently. And unfortunately, I got sucked into the fitness craze and I took it way too far. I was overtraining and I began doing IIFYM, I I which is if it fits your macros. And we all know that that can escalate into eating bad foods really quickly, especially when you're restricting your calories too much, which I definitely was. And I decided to start competing in shows where my calories were really, really restricted and it was really difficult for me to eat whole foods and eat healthy when I was having so many cravings. And then the worst onset of my symptoms occurred when I was 25 and I got my breast implants. That just opened a whole can of worms. My health deteriorated rapidly within six months. I was experiencing brain fog, constant fatigue, anxiety, depression, it was awful. And then during the three years I had my implants, that's when I started to experience more and more food intolerances, constant bloating, a bunch of physical health issues, like my hair was falling out and not growing back. I had the most severe cystic acne that I had ever had in my whole life, including puberty. I was having frequent UTIs, so like urinary tract infections, and I could just tell that my body was not functioning as it should. In fact, I felt like I was slowly dying, and there was a point where it occurred to me that I couldn't carry on how I was. I got to a really dark place, and I felt like a useless person, and um, I thought if I had continued on this way, then I would most likely have to have full-time care. And I thought about going back home and asking a family member to look after me because I couldn't do basic things. I, my health was so poor. And that's when I learned about breast implant illness and I got my implants removed. And since then, I had a complete 180 in terms of my health. I mean, immediately my eyes cleared up after being constantly bloodshot for years at that point. My hair started growing back. My skin cleared up so quickly. I still struggle with some skin issues, but not the cystic acne that I had then. That was intense. When I had my breast implants, I would get sick all the time with like the flu, the cold, that sort of thing. And I'm so glad that COVID happened after I got my implants out because I honestly don't think that I would have survived if I would have got COVID with my implants because my health was that poor. By the way, I got COVID last year in December and it was awful and I'm just so happy that I was healthy enough to get through it because like you can see how people could die from that. Like, I mean, of course it doesn't affect everyone the same, but it's can be really intense for some people. So it made me just really appreciate my health and feel grateful that I got my implants removed. So anyway, people were asking me about this because obviously I'm still having some mental health symptoms and fatigue, chronic fatigue symptoms now. How come I'm still having that after getting my implants removed? Wasn't that supposed to get rid of those issues? Yes, of course, that was my aim when I got rid of my implants. A lot of people promised that literally all of your symptoms would go away. And I think that's the truth for most people. I'd say about 80 to 90% of my symptoms were gone. Most obvious of those would be my physical symptoms, so my hair growth, my skin, and infections, and I rarely get ill anymore. So yeah, I mean, I feel like a hundred times or even a thousand times more healthy than I did when I have my implants. Like I feel like a real human being now. Before I felt like a zombie that was barely staying alive day to day like it was actually that bad i'm not exaggerating which is why i actually didn't really want to talk about it because it was a, an extremely traumatic experience for me and talking about it would just bring back horrible memories so that's yeah that's why i decided not to do a whole video on it by the way because i did think about it for a while but anyways <laughs> back to the present day where all of my symptoms are resolved except for Brain fog is my number one worst symptom that I have right now, as well as the depression and anxiety and chronic fatigue. Those are the worst 
three i often have pains in my neck joints and sometimes headaches so those are what's left and i'm really grateful that that's all that i'm dealing with right now all of them are a fraction of what they would have been before when i had my implants but obviously i don't want to continue to live with these symptoms i'd rather figure out what's wrong and i determined that it was linked to my gut health i'm still having all of the food intolerances that I developed when I had my breast implants. So I'm thinking the breast implants triggered a de degeneration in my gut health and I didn't do any sort of protocols or anything like that after my implants were removed to heal my gut. So I'm still kind of dealing with the consequences of that. And you know, unfortunately my gut didn't just magically heal itself after removing the implant. So that's my running theory at the moment. Yeah, I'm my main goal is to heal my gut. So that's what I'm working on right now. So Instagram already knows this, but I've transitioned myself to an organic whole foods diet as stage one to healing my gut. I've looked into gut healing protocols with like bone broths and that sort of thing and I don't feel like that is right for me at the moment. So I decided to start my whole foods organic diet in January and had an extremely positive experience right off the bat. I immediately began to notice I had more energy, my eyes were clear, I had been struggling with allergies, that was another symptom that I developed during my breast implants but that is currently unresolved i forgot to mention that one my eyes are clear during the day but i'll usually wake up with kind of bloodshot eyes and since i started the whole foods diet my eyes were a lot clearer to the point that ben noticed he was like oh you look more awake and i definitely felt i was more awake and not dealing with as much fatigue which was great and then i began introducing probiotic foods, fermented foods, things that are all recommended as being really healthy for a whole foods diet and especially a diet that's meant to heal your gut. But unfortunately, I've discovered that I have something that's called a histamine intolerance. And a histamine intolerance is essentially where... Okay, so I explained the histamine intolerance really poorly in the original footage. So I'm just gonna put this title on the screen and just pause and give it a read if you wanna know more and histamine is present in foods. It's present in lots of foods, which I didn't realize. So when I started introducing the probiotics and fermented foods, all of my good progress the first couple of weeks of January went down the drain and I started experiencing like a sore throat, so allergy symptoms, stuffed nose, um, just all the things that you normally get when you get allergies, as well as like intense fatigue. So I tried to go into a gut healing protocol where I took carbs out completely, got rid of all of my symptoms, so no anxiety, no no fatigue but my brain fog was awful so I don't think my body is able to regulate my blood sugar very well I did go to a nutritionist by the way and they did provide good advice but I think it's just a start so I'm looking into going to a dietitian, which is more of like a medical nutritionist and I do plan on seeing the doctor but I'm just not rushed to do it at the moment right now this isn't a huge priority I ended up transitioning to a low histamine low to medium carb diet and that's been working really well for me for the time being so that's what I'm currently doing and I'm really happy I'm feeling a lot better so yeah that's the update on my diet and my gut health oh and by the way I know a lot of people are really interested in this one but ever since I started my whole foods diet in January I haven't been bloated at all literally no bloating and I used to be bloated all the time like pretty much every day sorry the camera cut me off but Basically, I highly, highly recommend transitioning to a whole foods diet, foods in their natural state, and if you're gonna have prepared foods, prepare them yourself. It's a lot more work, but it's definitely worth it if you're struggling with health issues or mental health issues. I don't know about you, but not being bloated makes me feel better both mentally and physically. I just feel so grateful that I'm bloat free now. So this is what I currently look like right now. It's 2 p.m. so it's the middle of the day. I've had two meals already and that is my belly. And by the way, my butt is really flat right now because I haven't trained in a long time. I'm taking time off from training at the moment to work on my health because I noticed that training in the way that I did just made me more and more tired and 
sore so we're taking some time off and doing stretching and rehab instead but anyway yeah my bum is smaller but also my tummy is a lot smaller too which is really nice and it just feels so much better it's just great to not be bloated in the middle of the day because usually by this time i would be bloated and i'd stay bloated until i went to bed all right so i'm just about to go on a walk now it just got a little bit brighter out so i'm excited to get some fresh air and some well a little bit of sunshine because it never gets too sunny here especially in the winter at least since i haven't been training like weight training as i used to i've been trying to take a lot more walks and to get exercise in that way. And I prefer my walks to be more like hikes, so they're a little bit more intensive and I try to activate my glutes and things that way. So I'm gonna go for a walk now and I'll maybe take you guys along, show you a few quick clips and I'll see you when I get back. from my walk and I'm feeling a lot better honestly getting out in nature and getting fresh air makes such a big difference and I need to tell myself that because I've been slacking on my walks lately get out of there Phil was rooting through the recycling bin sorry <laughs> but yeah um I've not been going as often as I should be ideally I should really go for a walk every day but I've only been going a couple times a week so that's my motivation to keep to make it more of a routine so I'm going to try to figure out what time makes sense and just go at the same time every day. And I'm on to my next task of the day, which is a little bit of decluttering. So I'm gonna have to be decluttering from now until we move. It's just necessary because we are actually downsizing in the first move and we've accumulated way too much stuff. So yes, today I am going to declutter the pantry, which is a really easy one to start off with because as you guys may or may not know, I did a whole pantry overhaul, I think at the beginning of the last lockdown and it's remained pretty clean ever since. But since I am switching over to organic, I've got a bunch of food in there that's still sealed, that is not organic, therefore I won't eat and that Ben's not gonna wanna eat either. So I'm just gonna donate it to the food bank. So I'm gonna clear that out. And I also got a new juicer, which is really exciting. So this is my new juicer. Ta-da! So I decided that I wanna start juicing more regularly. I actually used to do this right after I got my implants removed and it did definitely help. And I think it, it helped me get a lot of nutrients really quickly. It's almost like ta taking fresh juice is similar to taking a multivitamin in my opinion because you're getting all of the nutrients, all of the like raw nutrients that aren't um, broken down by heat like when you cook vegetables, um, but you're also not taking in the vast amounts of fiber so it's much easier for your body to absorb. So that's why juicing is actually really healthy. Like the juice detoxes gave juice a bad name, but if you're having it as part of a healthy diet, what I like to do is drink it with meals, then um, I think it can only really help you to be honest. So I'm excited to set up my juicer, but I'm going to let myself do that once I clean out the pantry. I'll show you guys what we've got going on in there. So in this corner here, I've put all of my new organic pantry items that have yet to go in because we don't really have much space. So this is what it's looking like. It's not bad, it's pretty similar to how I organized it initially, but um, yeah, I just need to, I just need to rejig it a little bit and um, zhuzh it up, make it more functional for the foods that I have now and just donate a few things. There's not much stuff that I'll have to get rid of to be honest, but yeah. All 
right, the pantry is done. It's all nice and organized now, so I'm feeling really good about that. This area is now completely clear. Oh. And I'm gonna move on to the juicer. So I've taken it apart now. I've cleaned out all the internal parts because it's just good to wash it the first time that you use it. And I'm gonna put it together and chop up my veggies. And I'm so excited to try it. So this is a slow masticating, I think is the word. It's a slow press juicer. So, so as opposed to the centrifugal ones, these press the juices through an auger mechanism and it extracts the juice a lot slower, meaning that um, it doesn't heat up as much and the juice retains more of its nutrients. It's just able to extract a bit more juice than the centrifugal ones. And the main reason I got this one is that it's a lot easier to take apart and to clean. It extracts the pulp out from this point here. Um, so all the pulp goes into an external thing. So it's just easier to get rid of. Whereas my other one, you had to take the whole thing apart to get rid of the pulp. So I'm thinking this is gonna be a lot easier to use and a lot quicker to clean up. Okay, so I made my first batch of juice with the juicer and overall I'm really happy. I'm most excited with the fact that it only took me one minute to clean the juicer, which is crazy. It's unheard of. My previous juicer it would take me so long and often I'd have to soak the parts because the pulp would be all stuck in it. It was so fast, so I'm really happy about that. It did seem like it produced less juice, but I'm not really sure. I didn't end up reading the instructions for the juicer, so maybe I was missing something in my technique, so I'll have to read that and try again next time. And this time I decided to make cabbage and carrot and celery juice. So I've been making cabbage juice for a while because it's the best vegetable for healing the gut. If you're either eating regular cabbage or drinking the juice, then it provides nutrients that the good bacteria in your gut like to eat. Um, so it's basically food for the healthy gut microbiome, but it snuffs out the bad microbiome, if that makes sense. So, um, basically yeast and things that aren't supposed to be in your gut don't enjoy it. It's basically like a prebiotic. It helps to fortify all of the good stuff in your gut. And before I was making pure cabbage juice and it was not the best, so I thought if I mix it up with carrot and celery, this time it will be a little bit better. And I tried to make enough that will last me a couple of days. I try to have like a little bit of juice before every meal to help with digestion. The green plus orange is making it look a little bit brown, but I'm happy with how much juice I have. I have 600 milliliters of juice. <laughs> Next time I'll probably try to make a liter so that I can have enough to last me a few days. And the company that I ordered my juice from sent this juice jug with my order, which was really cool. And it's a vacuum juice container, so you can store it and it will last a lot longer in the fridge. So I think I'm gonna try that out as well. All right, so it's the end of the day. I need to get making dinner and clean up the rest of the kitchen. So I think I'm going to leave you guys here. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this vlog. I'm trying to get in the habit of just recording what I'm doing, even if I feel like it's super boring. So hopefully you, yeah, hopefully this video was helpful or entertaining to you in some way. I'm looking forward to continuing to vlog and get onto a schedule with it. So that's my main focus at the moment. And it, that just requires that I film on days that maybe I don't, you know, necessarily feel amazing or really inspired to film. So today was one of that one of those days, but I'm really happy that I did it. So yeah, thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.